COVID-19 Infection Control Part 6 Transmission Based Precautions Transmission Based Precautions Transmission based precautions are applied when standard infection prevention and control procedures alone are insufficient to prevent cross transmission of an infectious agent. Transmission based precautions are additional infection control precautions required when caring for a patient with a known or suspected infectious agent. Transmission based precautions are categorized by the route of transmission of the infectious agent. Main routes of transmission include the following Contact Droplet Airborne and Vehicleborne Contact transmission is broadly classified into two types Direct contact and indirect contact Direct contact occurs when microorganisms are transferred from one infected person to another Indirect contact involves the transfer of infectious agents to a contaminated intermediate objects or person. These are the most common routes of infection transmission. Droplet Transmission Infection transmission over short distances via droplets that is greater than 5 micrometers from the respiratory tract of one individual directly onto a mucosal surface or conjunctivity of another individual. Droplets penetrate the respiratory system to above the alveolar level. The maximum distance for cross transmission from droplets has not been definitively determined. Although a distance of approximately 1 meter that is 3 feet around the infected individual. Airborne Transmission Infection transmission without necessarily having close contact via aerosols that is less than or equal to 5 micrometers from the respiratory tract of one individual directly onto a mucosal surface or conjunctiva of another individual. Aerosols penetrate the respiratory system to the alveolar level. Interrupting transmission of COVID-19 requires both droplet and contact precautions. If an aerosol generating procedure is being undertaken then airborne precautions are required in addition to contact precautions. COVID-19 virus is expelled as droplets from the respiratory tract of an infected individual, for example during coughing and sneezing, directly onto a mucosal surface or conjunctiva of a susceptible individuals or environmental surfaces. Droplets travel only short distances through the air. A distance of at least 1 meter has been used for deploying droplet precautions. However, this distance should be considered as the minimum rather than an absolute. Transmission-based precautions should be continued until the resolution of the patient's fever and respiratory symptoms. The duration of transmission-based precautions may require modification based on the intelligence gathered about COVID-19. Patients can be discharged before resolution of symptoms provided they are deemed clinically fit for discharge and should be advised to self-isolate as per staying at home guidance. Special environmental controls, such as negative pressure isolation rooms, are not necessary to prevent the transmission of COVID-19. However, in the early stages, and in high-risk settings, patients with suspected or confirmed COVID-19 may be isolated in negative pressure rooms. Wherever possible, patients with suspected or confirmed COVID-19 should be placed in single rooms. Single rooms in COVID-19 segregated areas should, wherever possible, be reserved for performing aerosol generating procedures. Single rooms in non-COVID-19 areas should be reserved for patients requiring isolation for other reasons.
assigning a dedicated team of staff to care for patients in isolation slash cohort rooms or areas is an additional infection control measure. Staff who have had confirmed COVID-19 and recovered should continue to follow the infection control precautions, including personal protective equipment. If transport or movement is necessary, consider offering the patient a fluid-resistant surgical mask to be worn during transportation, to minimize the dispersal of respiratory droplets when this can be tolerated. Patients must be taken straight to and returned from clinical departments and must not wait in communal areas. If possible, patients should be placed at the end of clinical lists. Patient transfer from one healthcare facility to another should be avoided. If the transfer is ascension, the ambulance service and receiving hospital must be advised in advance of the infectious status of the patient. A fluid-resistant surgical mask must be worn when working in close contact that is within one meter of a patient with COVID-19 symptoms. This provides a physical barrier to minimize contamination of the mucosa of the mouth and nose. Filtering face piece respirator should be worn whenever there is a risk of airborne transmission of pandemic COVID-19 that is during aerosol generating procedures and at all times in intensive care unit, intensive therapy unit, high dependency units where COVID-19 patients are cohorted. Thank you for the listening.